Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Deadpool 2 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Today we're finally going to be taking a look at Cable. The wait has been long but fingers crossed it was worth it. Now I got mine from toyswonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button for more info on Justin's Collection Plus, the channel membership. As for the box art, it's pretty simple. Up front, an image of the figure himself, up top his name, then down below, Deadpool 2. On the side of the box, a Deadpool logo and cable once again, then on the back, all of the warnings and legal info. When the blogger pics were released, a lot of people were freaking out, saying he looks terrible. His head is too big or his body is too skinny. Either way, I'm very curious to see this guy in hand. First impressions, even from a distance, yeah. I can already tell that there are a couple of interesting choices that Hot Toys made here. More on that though a little bit later. What we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, it's done in the usual hexagonal style. Up top some kind of holographic rendering of Cable's time travel device and a mix of textures. We've got matte sections and glossy sections plus a Deadpool 2 logo. Around the front, Cable, up top, a regular crotch grabber. We do get his daughter's charred teddy bear and this thing is filthy. There's dirt and grime all over the place, it looks like proper burnt fur. But of course it isn't, it's all rubbery plastic. We do have a string and metal hook so you can hook this onto his outfit. You will see that a little bit later. Something that we haven't seen before with the Toy Zero version is this shield. It's cast in really sturdy high quality plastic. I was worried it was going to be clamshell, thank goodness it isn't. You've got a bunch of mini hexagons making up the overall honeycomb look plus three bullet ripple effects and a bunch of yellow shading. I also like that they hid this rubbery articulated disc behind the central one. It just makes it look that little bit more seamless. When it comes to smaller weapons, we get three of them. A knife, a pistol and a grenade launcher. The knife is done in plastic. It's a little bit prickly though, so do be careful not to spike yourself. You've got a serrated edge on one side where the other is just a standard blade and the handle is done in black plastic. Unfortunately, I can't really find a place to store this on the figure, and the instructions don't mention it either. If you know what kind of pistol this is, please let me know down below. Up top, you can move the slide forward and back, plus remove the magazine, which isn't the easiest thing in the world to accomplish, but when you do, there is some fully painted bullet detail. It's cast in gunmetal plastic with a teeny amount of silver dry brushing just to give it that subtle worn look. The same thing can be said for his grenade launcher, also gunmetal plastic, also the teeny tiniest amount of silver dry brushing. Up top there's a little here, on the other side you've got a little towards the back but other than that it's pretty clean. Now nothing actually moves here but he does come with three grenades that you can slot into the barrel. Although, if you do slot them in there, I reckon you'd have a tough time taking them out. You also have a slot on his outfit to store this. Once again, I'll show you where this goes later on. He also comes with this little disc mine, at least I'm pretty sure it's a mine. If it's not, I'm sure you'll let me know. One side is red, one side is black, with some nice gold accents around the edge. There is also a wash in the crevices, plus the main body is done in shiny metallic silver. Alright, let's move on to the star of the show, his BFG. This thing looks really cool. You've got multiple different parts and pieces that have been combined together to make this big honkin' gun. Up top you can move the sight forward and back, you can move his grenade launcher just a little, and you can remove the magazine which does pick in really securely. You also have some painted bullet detail up on top. Around the back you have a real fabric section that holds in these two little canisters, and the entire thing is done in gunmetal, but this time we have a bunch more silver dry brushing on the surface. You also have a bit of a wood grain print for the stock, 
yeah, overall I really like this. In comparison to the Toy Zero version, the Toy Zero one is a little bit smaller, and the details are completely different. You do have the little dial section around the back, but with Hot Toys, it's up the front. The scope does look different, the magazine has some visible bullets, and overall, the Toy Zero one is just a lot thinner. They both do have magnets in the middle of them so they can slot onto his back. I know I've said this a bunch, but don't you worry, I will be showing you that when we get the figure himself out here. As you would expect, he does come with his time travel device on this robbery ring, and quite surprisingly, it's significantly different as compared to the Dusty Deadpool version. Now, they're both supposed to be the same device, so I'm not quite sure why Hot Toys decided to make the change. The ring is a different size, so too is the time travel device, and it's also a lot thinner. Which one do I prefer? Well, it's the new one. This one was always far too bulky. Maybe you could say this one isn't activated yet, and this one is, but for me, I just prefer the way this one looks. Lastly, we get two hands for the human side, but a bunch more for the robot side. I don't know why Hot Toys are preferencing one over the other. I kind of wish we got the same gestures for both sides. Nevertheless, Hot Toys quit being stingy. We do have fingerless gloves here, the skin texture is well painted, and the gloves themselves are very nicely sculpted. Plus, if you don't want to go for the gloved look, you also get some ungloved hands for the robot side. The detail is immaculate. They are done in this rubbery plastic, as you'd expect, but I do like how shiny and metallic they are. I'm very curious to see which way I go, ungloved or gloved, for this side in the display. What we are going to do now, though, is get Cable himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses, but wearing almost all of his accessories. So far, so good. I like this figure. Does that mean he's perfect and he's a 10 out of 10 home run? No, of course not. We've got stuff to discuss. But just standing there with all the gear on, the proportions are good. He fills out the outfit, everything comes together, it doesn't look too bulky, it doesn't look too toy-like, plus the head sculpt is really good. I know some people said it was too large and the likeness wasn't there. In person, even from a distance, I can tell exactly who that is supposed to be. A lot of people also said, oh, the Toy Zero one is superior. Well, I'm here to tell you, not on its best day does it touch this figure. In terms of quality, in terms of paint applications, fit and finish, and the way everything comes together, this is the superior cable. Up close and personal, I did want to start off with him wearing everything first, then we'll slowly remove the layers and see what he looks like without anything on his upper torso. Now the poncho is a really nice fabric. It's nice and lightweight, you've got some real metal rivets, and it is wired around the edges plus up top for his hood. You can have him wear the hood if you want to. For me personally, I think that looks a little goofy. You also have this kind of lining section along the edge that's slightly more glossy, and it's along the bottom as well. Around the back, you can holster his BFG with the included magnet, it's nice and strong, even with a little shake, it's not going anywhere. With the poncho now removed, we can discuss his head sculpt. I don't know why everyone was freaking out, me included. It looks great. The likeness to Josh Brolin is absolutely there. I think the one thing that throws it off is the open mouth expression, but the teeth are a separate piece, so there's a little bit of depth and shadow. The skin texture is very well painted, it's nice and HD. And I love the way they've done the shaved hair look. It actually looks like a proper shaved head. Up top, the hair does have some gradients to it. It's not just all one color. And yes, he does have his scarring. It looks gross. Now, if you want to, you can remove the head sculpt and flick this switch. And then the LED turns on. It's super bright without the head sculpt on, but when you install it, it's a really subtle effect. You can only really see it from certain angles, so for me personally, I'm never really going to use it. But the benefit of having the removable head sculpt on this kind of joint is you can adjust it up and down. So if you find, 
Hey, the neck is a little bit too long, you can simply push it down even further to adjust his proportions. His outfit is relatively simple, he's wearing a maroon coloured t-shirt that's stretchy fabric so no problems with articulation. One sleeve is tattered where one sleeve isn't. He's wearing this black military style vest with a real working molly system. I know that because I had to install all three of these clips. Super annoying to do. Hot Toys, I don't like installing these things, especially when it's part of the outfit anyway. Just like with Dusty Deadpool, how they had you install the duct tape. If it's something that's going to make the look more accurate, do it your darn self. He also has a carabiner around the front, three grenade shells up top, and around the back you can get a sneak preview of his biomechanical virus sculpted into his body. Speaking of biomechanical, he's got his robot arm, and I love it. You've got a ton of rib detail where it looks like there's some wiring, some gold pistons, and the entire thing is metallic. You have washers in the crevices, and due to the way it's been sculpted, it kind of looks like the joint is seamless, but it isn't. It's fully jointed. Whereas on the other side for his human arm, it's far too small. His bicep is tiny, you do have some vein work which is all sculpted and painted, except that joint right there is hideous. Hopefully going forward Hot Toys can print the skin texture on that joint and make it look a little less obvious. I do also have him wearing his time travel device which simply slots over his hand and friction from that rubber cap will hold it in position. Moving down to his belt area, it's a real camo style belt but this belt buckle is fake. You can't actually open it and remove anything. He does have kind of annoyingly a pleather holster for his grenade launcher. I wish that wasn't pleather but it is still functional. Couple of clip holders for his magazines and a holster for his pistol that is hard plastic. Then around the back you do have the little strap and clip for his teddy bear. Once again you have to slide it through the molly system. Really, really annoying and cumbersome to work with. Magnets, velcro, press studs, there are a bunch of different ways to get this stuff done. Using a molly system in 1-6 scale, it's just really hard to work with. Now, interestingly enough, his pants are sewn on. That means it's going to be really difficult to switch the body and really difficult to tuck his shirt in if you opt to remove it. Most collectors will probably take the shirt off at least once to see the body underneath. And when you try and tuck it back in, because you can't undo the pants and fold them over the top, then velcro it in place, yeah, it's really, really difficult to do. Trust me, I speak from experience. Because I've already taken a sneak peek at that body, which means I had to put that shirt back on. Super annoying, super cumbersome. His pants are grey fabric, and they are really nicely weathered. They're soiled in all the seams, they're slightly baggy, so that's definitely a good thing for articulation. Coming down to the boots, they look great, and oh yes, they're a split cut boot design, maximum range of motion here. I do like the way they're sculpted, there's a ton of wrinkling and even a little bit of texture, plus a bunch of silver painted eyelets, and yes, the tread is fully sculpted in underneath. But if you are wondering what he looks like without everything on, you can clearly tell that Hot Toys were really trying here, but unfortunately they didn't quite stick the landing. What do I mean? Well, his neck is really long, his torso is kind of skinny, and his arms are way too small. Josh Brolin as Cable was an absolute beast. Whereas this figure goes for the look with the clothes on, where everything's in proportion when you take them off, yeah, it starts to look a little funky. Now you can adjust the height of the head sculpt a little because of the nature of this light up peg, but it doesn't go down low enough to save this look. At the very least, the sculpt is good. I do like all of the biomechanical virus sections, there's a bunch of ribbing and a ton of texture. Plus it looks like the flesh is starting to be eaten away, it's really nasty. You've got some red coloured shading so it looks relatively fresh. And the metallic sections are nice and shiny. You do also have a wash in the crevices to bring out all that detail. I do like the integrated cut for his pecs so it looks a little bit more seamless, yet it still retains a decent level of range of motion. 
With all of that being said, could I ever display my cable like this? No. I don't really recommend you do so either. All of the cuts are now visible, and as I said, it's just way too skinny. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Toy Zero Mechanical wearing a custom gin toy head sculpt on the right, and then the Hot Toys cable on the left. For me personally, the winner is clear. It's Hot Toys. He's slightly taller, I like the proportions better, the robot arm is far more detailed, and the outfit is way more accurate to the movie. Whereas with Toy Zero, the outfit wasn't, it's kind of baggy in certain places, he falls over constantly, his gun falls off constantly, and the stock head sculpt just ain't it. That's why I replaced it with the Jin Toy one. Even then, I still think the Hot Toys head sculpt is superior. But we all have our own personal preferences and opinions. Do let me know which one you prefer down in the comments below. Next up, here we have Deadpool from Deadpool 2. He's a little bit taller. That's to be expected. Josh Brolin isn't the tallest dude in the world, so it kind of makes sense. That translates to 1 6 scale as well. Do they look good together? That's the big question. For me, they absolutely do. They complement each other beautifully. Because they're from the same company, from the same movie, from the same line, it just makes sense. I'm now even more excited to pose these two up together in the display. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a ball joint. Looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. Do be careful if you push the head sculpt all the way down though, cause his chin is budding right up against his neck. His arms do go up to there, they will go forward and back, and unfortunately you don't get a ton of range for the butterfly at the shoulder. Single bend at the elbow that also incorporates a swivel, plus a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso crunches forward to there, going back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, ratcheted double bend at the knee that gets you more than the full way, and of course, a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing, you probably saw this coming, is the display base. Hot Toys, if you're setting the precedent of giving Deadpool this base and Dusty Deadpool this one, you'll notice they're matching. Whereas with Cable, he breaks the mold entirely and they went hexagonal. If you're going to do a line of figures, at the very least make the bases consistent. Cause this is going to drive me absolutely crazy, I don't know about y'all, but I like all of my bases in the same line to be matching. The second annoying thing is his LED eye, it's way too subtle. Now if you remove the head sculpt, the LED is really bright. So that's not the culprit, the issue is the crevice it shines through is tiny. Now in the attempt to not have light bleed around the area, Hot Toys went a little bit too extreme with the black plastic, so now, yeah, the LED eye isn't really all that useful. The third annoying thing is how hard it is to install these magazine pouches on his vest. You have to contend with these little straps and slide these little metal pins through, Super annoying, and I think Hot Toys knew that. They spared their factory workers and made us do it instead. Now you might be thinking, but what if you want to remove them? Well, you can, but I would prefer them to be pre-installed out of the box, seeing as though these magazines don't come out anyway. The first cool thing is his cybernetic arm. I think it looks really good. There's a ton of detail here, plus the elbow joint is really well hidden amongst all of that detail, so when you have it straight up and down, it almost looks entirely seamless. The second cool thing is the poncho, and that's kind of crazy to me. Based off the Toy Zero figure, I thought this was destined to be an annoying thing, but it isn't. It's single ply, it's nice and lightweight, you've got a wire running through the edge and the hood. Plus, there's a magnet around the front that nicely and securely holds it in position. The third cool thing is his custom body. Now, it's not perfect. We know this. The neck is slightly long, he's a little bit skinny, but even with all of that being said, the sculpt and the paint applications 
it's really good. You can see that they have tried to hide that joint up top so it looks a little bit more seamless and in the right pose. Yeah, it's gonna absolutely work. Wrapping up on Hot Toys Cable from Deadpool 2. Going into this, even though I know this is a controversial figure, I was still excited, sue me. I'm a huge fan of Deadpool, I love Josh Brolin, and Cable kicks some serious butt in that movie. So, now that we have him in figure format, does that mean I'd lie to you, I'm in some kind of way biased? No, I don't care if you buy this figure, I don't get commission, I don't get compensated, it's entirely up to you. So in saying all of that, I really like him. He's not perfect without the outfit on, but how many of you are displaying this guy shirtless? I know there's all that detail underneath, but he looks way better with all of that extra padding and all of that extra ammunition and weaponry. So in my display, I'm going with shirt, vest, and poncho on. Plus, the poncho is actually really good. I thought it was going to be this terrible, really hard to work with fabric. It isn't. You have to spend a little bit of time getting it to sit just right. But when you do, it absolutely complements the figure. The head sculpt, though, was something that I was really worried about because the promo pics kind of made it look terrible and soft and made it look like there was no likeness at all to Josh Brolin. In hand, that couldn't be further from the truth. This is Cable. The skin texture, the way they've done the hair where it's been shaved, and the paint applications. I'm really happy. So at the end of the video, this guy isn't perfect, he's got some problems, but he's far better than the Toy Zero one, and if you have Deadpool and you've been waiting for a cable, this is it right here. Just make sure you're displaying him with his clothes on. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.